Technically the first ever open world Star Wars game finally releases this week. I got a chance to play it early and I have to say after my experience, I'm actually kind of surprised by it. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new game review. Haven't done one of these on this channel in quite a bit, but it is a very exciting time to talk about Star Wars with Star Wars Outlaws. Now, I know there's been a ton ton of conversations about this game specifically, mostly for the fact that people are mixed on the idea, and specifically a lot of the previews have not looked that great, and Ubisoft as a studio can be a little bit disappointing when it comes down to some of their games, but what was giving me hope was that this was from the developers of The Division, who, whatever you might think about those games, I found that The Division had such a great world building to it, and if they were going to be tasked to take on and create the open world of Star Wars Outlaws, then that was going to sell me. Now, I'm a massive story guy, though, and I needed that story to be the big aspect of this game. And I got a lot of conversations about that, but this is a non-spoiler review. You are safe. I'm not going to spoil the game. I'm just going to give you guys my basic overall thoughts on it. And as well, if you're looking for more thoughts on this, I actually did a podcast episode with my co-host over on the End of the Geek First channel where we talked more in depth on it. And that was filmed. We had actually not beaten the game yet. As of now, I have officially beaten the game. So two different conversations, two different point of views as well on that podcast. And on the following one after that, we will also be doing a follow-up episode discussing our thoughts in full spoilers. So if you want more thoughts on it, check it out there. If for some reason you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Star Wars Outlaws is, well, it's set between the events of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, where you explore distinct planets across the galaxy, both iconic and new, and you risk it all as K. Vess, a scoundrel seeking freedom and means to start a new life, along with her companion, Nyx. Fight, steal, and outwit your way through the galaxy's crime syndicate as you join the galaxy's most wanted. Now, basically to put it out there, you are going through the underworld of Star Wars during this time period, and you're playing a scoundrel. You're not playing a Jedi. You're not playing a clone trooper. You're not playing a stormtrooper. You're not playing any of those sorts of things. You are a scoundrel and new to this world of some sorts, and someone who was raised and birthed in this and has always wanted to do this in the galaxy. And for me, just like starting with my pros, the massive thing that I can really give Star Wars Outlaws is the fact that it is diving into the underworld of Star Wars, which is something that whether it's the shows, live action, or of course animated and even diving in the movies, that's always been one massive part that I've always wanted a little bit more from. You can say that about the Mandalorian. I love the Mandalorian series for the most part other than the last season, but I do like when he dove into a little bit of the underworld. Not enough. Same with Book of Boba Fett. I was expecting it to. It never really did. And I really think the closest thing that we've ever gotten to in terms of live action stuff was probably Solo, a Star Wars story, which again, wasn't even the deepest thing to it. It was just the closest thing since we were following Han Solo. And when it comes down to the animated stuff, of course, certain things in Clone Wars and Rebels did kind of dive into this stuff, but again, never into the most meatiest of things. But Star Wars Outlaws probably gives us our best outlook at it. And there's a lot of cool aspects in terms of the outlaw system and, of course, the reputation system, which I'm not sure how much has been talked about outside of the game. But you basically have four different clans that you can side with or screw over in terms of however you want to. And each of these give benefits to the players, whether it's on, depending on what planet you're on, depending on your play style, depending on upgrades that you want. There are things to that. But for some reason, I wanted to always side with Crimson Dawn. Some of that might be because I love Amelia Clark's Kira and I like Kira as a character and I've always wanted more of her. And same thing goes like maybe you want to side with the Hut. So like all of Tatooine is basically Hut territory. So like if you're not on Jabba's good side, you basically get shot at almost every place you go. And that's kind of one of the things that I think really elevates this game is that reputation system. And maybe it's not the deepest thing, but it is something that really kept me engaged in specifically cho choosing missions and contracts. And when you do these contracts, maybe you're doing one for the huts. By the end of that mission, you still might have to make that choice of whose side do I want to be? Do I want to still work for the huts? Or maybe do I want to screw over the pikes instead? Or maybe I want to side with the pikes on this. There's a lot of interesting and creative ideas with the underworld in here that 
for me, intrigued me and always had me thinking, which side do I want to go on? And at first I thought it was a little bit surface level, but it does get a little bit deeper as I just started to play through the game a little bit more. And again, a really fun factor to there that really adds to the immersive level of Star Wars Outlaws, which is another thing that I actually want to mention is the immersiveness of this game. Now, I'll talk about in my issues, my cons, there are some glitches here and there, and there's some things that take you out of that immersion. But for the most part, it really does feel like you are a scoundrel. You have your trusty pistol. You got your trusty little friend, Nyx, who I love Nyx. Just as a side note, like Nyx is an all-star character. Like my wife walked in on me playing this and she's like, I want a Nyx. And I said, yeah, I want a Nyx too. He's so cute. And he's so fun, and I like what you can do with him, whether it's planting traps, whether it's pickpocketing people, whether it's attacking people, literally. All these little things and all these fun ideas were so great. But diving back into that immersion thing, every single piece of this game, whether it's the worlds, whether it's the locations you go to, everything is so realized and brought to life, specifically the small towns, and even whether you walk into a cantina or a merchant store, you're just walking down the street of Kijima. These little things really add to the flair of what Star Wars is and some of these planets that you've seen in media before it is really cool to walk around see the locale and like actually pinpoint and notice like oh this is from the movie oh this is from the show and all these little details is like kind of something that like the attention to details a Star Wars fan really meant a lot to me and it was one thing that I have to give massive entertainment major props on because that immersion was the thing that actually had me stop look around and just take in the scenery and the attention to detail is very much there there's not an issue with no one walking around or just little characters it does feel like a fully fledged and lived in town and say you go to a random little jungle town there is enough people to make it feel like realistically yeah like the eight people that live here when you mention that this is the smallest town probably hidden in the jungle it makes sense these little things always add to again that immersion of it all and I really liked that aspect I like going around on the speeder which just talking about the speeder it's a lot of fun it feels great to kind of just blare through the deserts of Tatooine or the blare through this jungle scenery and I always had a blast going through it and then same thing with your your ship which I'm always a big guy on ship combat I, I'm always curious to see how they nail it and for here I thought the ship combat was overall great I like the upgrade system as well for this it's not just based on bu buying money or buying parts you legitimately do have to do some research find some things and it, it's never feeling grindy which is like a massive thing for me this doesn't feel grindy and that's actually the biggest aspect that I can give this game is it doesn't feel like a typical Ubisoft open world game which is literally what I think a majority of people were expecting there are cliches to it but it's not like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry where you climb this tower you take out this outpost and it opens up part of the map or you do this and you do that and it, it opens up this no it is very much its own thing, and I would actually more compare this game, like, there's been some comparisons to Grand Theft Auto, but it's not Grand Theft Auto. Like, yeah, you can get a wanted level and things like that, and it's cool to go up against the Empire, but this game is actually way more uncharted than it is anything close to a gta or anything of that nature imagine if uncharted got an entirely open world scenario and i think that is the way to kind of look at this um and that's what i really overall liked because it does feel action adventurous you are sometimes climbing through these random caves to find a random treasure that nix spotted out or you got intel about and those are the things that every time a lot of the missions were uncharted based it gave me reminiscence and memories of the first uncharted which was very charismatic character with other charismatic characters around him a surface level villain and an overall goal to find this treasure or again in this case pull off the biggest heist in the galaxy that they've ever seen and as you're going through it it's a little bit bare bones and for me, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit more in a second. Last but not least, I think the last thing to mention is the gameplay. The gameplay feels smooth. I had fun with it. I never ran into any issues. I never ran into any glitches. Maybe it could have been a little bit deeper, but I overall liked all the different things you can do with your pistol. But with that said, let's dive into my mixed aspects because I don't think this game is perfect. I don't think it's one of the best Star Wars games ever made, bar none, not even close. And some of that does come down to the story. Now, the story, I think, is surface level for the most part. You get to understand who Kay Vess is as a character, and I like those little interactions and specifically what it dives into in her past with Nyx and her. And I think for me, when I actually look at this entire game, 
as I mentioned with Uncharted, it's a nice surface level thing. You get just enough to like this character, but not enough to dive deeper into it. And I think for me, if this is the start of a brand new franchise and a brand new character, I'm excited to see what they do next. Because specifically with a lot of Ubisoft games, most of the times the second game is a little bit of the stronger one and the less prototypish thing. And from here, they can take on a lot of their different approaches to where, okay, I like this idea. I like this idea. The fans like this idea. Let's move forward with that now. And a lot of that goes with the story. I would like to see a little bit more of a meatier story, but for the most part, it's serviceable. I liked it. Some people might think it's a little bit boring, but I like kind of the whole approach of like touching around in the underworld. Alongside this, I think this will probably be the biggest thing. And this one sides more towards the cons, but I also am a little bit mixed because I didn't mind the repetitive loop of it. Some of the mission variety. A lot of the mission variety is go here, steal this, kill this person, or go here, do not kill anyone, try and be stealthy as much as possible and get away and steal this thing. And it is, for the most part, the same mission variety. I really wish we would have gotten a little bit more of that. I don't see myself past 45, 50 hours in here trying to 100% complete the game. Um, I think I'm at right now 25, 30 when I had beaten the game. And I, and I still want to keep playing the game. That'll only tell. There's some things that keep me going. But the mission variety does get a little bit, oh, okay. The the thing that really keep me interested was, like, how much can I get away with? Like, in terms of, like, shooting a couple guards and, the like, no one being alerted. Like, those are the things that I like to play around in these missions. But I can definitely see someone being completely bored or bored in a couple hours. And if you're not enjoying what you're doing within the first two, three hours, then maybe this game isn't for you. For the most part, like the stealth, I like the combat, so I had enough fun with it. But again, I can see some people, maybe not. I would like to have seen a little bit more of mission variety or a little bit of bigger landish outscapes. Like everything always just felt the same. It's like, and again, I don't want to make comparisons to Grand Theft Auto or other open world games. Even like if I'm looking at Ubisoft itself, like when I'm looking at Far Cry, like sometimes there's these giant grand spectacle set pieces. And even though, again, some of it's like, okay, go here, kill this person, go here, liberate this person. At least in those giant set pieces, you're really going all out in terms of explosions and everything going on. And there's some in here I would have just liked a little bit more. And the last but not least, to dive into my last bit of issues with the game, I did find that the game had some bugs. The game crashed on me at least twice, not to the point where I was like pissed, but there are some bugs in here that do take you out of the immersion. Some of the AI with some of the characters where it's like, You'll literally have like I've had multiple times where like all the characters would just be lined up in like one giant straight line, like when they spawned in and I could just kill them. And it was easy. And I, I never understood why. Again, I know it's bugs. Patches will fix it. But that's just one thing I ran into that it did break some of the immersion for me. And graphically, I think sometimes this game looks great and other times it does not look great at all. Now. The Jedi Fallen series, which I'm a massive fan of, I really like the last one and I really like the first one. When I played the last one early before the day one patch came out, the graphics were also a fucking mess on that game. And then they came out and they were a little bit better and obviously they've patched the shit out of it to where it doesn't feel like that anymore. That is one thing to keep in mind though. This game, you know, I played on without a day one patch. So maybe it fixes it. I don't know, but some of the facial animations just looked so stoic and boring on certain characters where it's like they're saying such so much emotion. And then you get into these CGI cutscenes, which are uh, 10 times better. I just expected a little bit more from that, but I have to mention it because it was one of the things that did definitely take me out of certain things. I forgot to say this, but ND5, just not as a con. I love this droid. I love, love, loved him so much, and I love really much the crew that you kind of get onto this ship. I thought that was a cool interaction. Overall, in the end of the day, Star Wars Outlaws is awesome. It surprised me. It was not the pile of crap that it was looking out to be, and it actually is a solid, fun Star Wars adventure, and not one that I would bar none not recommend. I can recommend it for the most. Now, if you're someone who can't afford every video game, can only afford a couple games a year, I would probably say wait until this one's a little bit cheaper. But if you are someone who just loves Star Wars and loves diving into this and already sold on the game, I think you will be sold on what you're getting out of this. My co-host, and if you go and watch that other video, you'll see that he gave this game a 6 out of 10. For me, I'm sticking with an 8 out of 10, which is what I gave on the original podcast when I was reviewing it so far. After beating it, I'm still at an 8 out of 10. I had a really good time with this game, and I think this is a great premise and setup for what could come to the future. Not saying that they left it open or anything, 
But I'm just saying in terms of what was given here and in terms of what Ubisoft has shown in the past, this is a good enough start that it made me happy, satisfied, and as someone who literally has almost no time to binge play video games anymore, this game actually had me coming back to it and actually foregoing other things that I needed to get done. So that's my thoughts, guys. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe button, and of course, until next time, stay classy.